Hey guys, how's it going, dude? Here I'm back with another video. So today, have you seen the video I did last Tuesday? If you haven't, it's the Hello Kitty murder video, and you might remember me saying this because this is one of the darkest stories, one of the darkest cases I have ever looked into for this channel. It could possibly be the darkest one I will ever look into. Ever look into. Well. No more than two days later am I going to go even darker than what I thought was the darkest place I'd go on this channel. Today I'm going to talk about the tragic torture, rape and murder of Yunko Furuta. Yunko was a 16 year old schoolgirl, very bright, had a good future ahead of her academically. She was great, she never got herself into trouble, she never dealt in drugs or drinking or smoking or anything like that. In November of 1988, her fate would take a dark and unfortunate and tragic turn. Yunko was very pretty and always got the attention of the guys. And one day she got the attention of Hiroshi Miyano. Now everyone knew Hiroshi Miyano around the school as the bully. But the scariest thing about Hiroshi was the fact that he had heavy connections to the Yakuza crime syndicate. This made him untouchable, this made him terrifying, and this meant that everyone did exactly what he said. Now Hiroshi really did fancy Yunko, and naturally he asked her out, but for the first time ever in his life someone said no to Hiroshi. Yunko turned him down and then didn't think anything else of it. Now a few days later Hiroshi and his friend Minato were hanging around a local park preying on innocent women. These guys were already even at the age of 16 serial gang rapists right and they were experts at spotting the easy targets. Now while they were there the boys noticed Yunko riding home on her bicycle back from work. Hiroshi ran over to Yunko and kicked her off of her bike, creating a diversion. Minato then turned up, pretending to be the Good Samaritan there to fix the situation and help her and offered to walk her home, of which she said yes, not thinking anything of it, thinking that he was her saviour, if you like. She never made it home ever again. Instead, Minato and Hiroshi led her to an abandoned warehouse where Hiroshi raped Yunko and told her that if she tells anyone, her family will die and her friends will die and she will die. They then took her back to the park where Minato and another friend Ogura raped her and then they took her back to Minato's parents home. Now Yunko's parents did call the police and report her missing but the boys had that covered. What they did was they got Yunko to call her own parents and tell them not to worry that she had ran away from home. She was now living with a friend but she was in no form of danger and she was so terrified of these boys and their, their connection to the Yakuza that she did exactly what they said. Now, of course, this girl was held captive in Minato's parents' house. It was a quite a large house, but every time that the parents saw Yunko in the house, Yunko was forced to pose as Minato's girlfriend. But eventually, the parents began to catch wind that something wasn't right, when there was lots of bruises, etc., on Yunko's face and body. But they were so terrified of their own son and his connections to the Yakuza that they said, and did nothing. They just played complete ignorance to the whole ordeal. So the 44 day torture of Yunko. She was kept naked for the majority of that time. She was raped up to five hundred times in the space of those 44 days, both vaginal and anal. This was done by over 100 men. Many of the Yakuza friends and just friends in general of the three boys involved got many people to come round and rape and abuse Yunko. Apparently once there was 12 men in one day 
that raped Junko. The men enjoyed urinating on her. To turn the men on, they forced her to masturbate in front of them. She was hit with golf clubs, smashed her face against the concrete, hit with iron bars. Various objects were forced into her vagina and anus, including iron bars, needles, scissors, bottles. There was even a light bulb that was inserted into her vagina and was turned on and was rubbed until it exploded inside. She was given limited food and water and was often forced to eat cockroaches and drink her own urine. She had her left nipple ripped off with pliers. Fireworks were attached to her back and then set off causing horrendous burns down her back. She was tied with her hands behind her back, her feet tied together, and then dumbbells dropped from a height onto her stomach, causing irreparable damage to her bowels, meaning she had no bowel control. She was hung from a ceiling and used as a boxing bag. Her eyelids and her feet were burned with hot wax and lighters. Her breasts were pierced with sewing needles, her clitoris and vagina were burned with cigarettes and lighters. She was kept in the freezer for hours at a time. A quarter of the way through this ordeal, she was no longer able to breathe through her nose because it had been broken so many times and blood had coagulated, so she couldn't physically get oxygen through her nasal passage. Because of the internal damage that has been done to her, she began to reject any food and water which caused her to vomit instantly which would then get on the carpet etc which would infuriate the kidnappers more so they would beat her further and further she once tried to call the police when they were distracted but she got caught just as the police answered the phone which caused the men to beat her seriously to within an inch of her life they also poured lighter fluid on her feet because of this and set fire to them they smashed her hands to pieces with weights leaving her unable to use her hands or her feet. It was the winter time, it was November, December, she was left out on the balcony to sleep at night. Due to all of the insertion of foreign objects, she was left unable to urinate because of the damage internally that had been done. Her eardrums were damaged and her brain size was reduced considerably. Now obviously she would have got to a point where she would beg for death and this was never given to her. But strangely one day they offered to play a game of solitaire with her and when she won this again pissed off the kidnappers to a point where they beat her into shock where she later died. Now this panicked the men and they decided to stuff her body into a 55 gallon drum and fill it with cement, putting it on a cement truck to be taken away. Now before we get on to how they were eventually caught, the tragic thing about this is the police were informed of her being missing twice. The first time was from a boy who was invited over to rape and abuse her. He went home and told his brother about what had happened and his brother went straight to the police and informed them everything that was going on. The police went round to the house, knocked on the door and was greeted by Minato's parents who assured the police that there was no girl in the house and that it was probably just a sick prank which the police believed and so they never returned to the house again. The second time of course was when Yunko herself tried to call the police and they answered but there was no voice on the other end of the phone before the phone was cut off but they could trace it to Minato's parents house but apparently that wasn't suspicious enough and when they called up Minato's parents again they were like no it must have just been a mistake on our end calling you we are sorry and the police didn't intervene any further. Two weeks later, Hiroshi and Ogura were arrested on a completely separate gang rape charge. Now during Hiroshi's investigation, the police mentioned an open murder case. Now believing it was the murder of Yunko, thinking shit they know about Yunko's murder, he confessed and told them where they could find her body. And the thing was, they were on about a completely different murder. So he actually confessed unknowingly to a murder he could have got away with. Within days, the main perpetrators were in custody. Now, despite everything that they did to Yunko, despite the absolute abhorrent things they put her through, their, their sentences were incredibly light. Hiroshi was sentenced to 20 years, Shinji Minato 
was sentenced to five to nine years. Joe Agura served eight years and Yasushi Watanabe served five to seven years. Now obviously they were technically juveniles at the time which is why their sentences were so short. It is thought that if they were adults just a few years older then they would have been put to capital punishment. But that is the case of Yunko Furuta. Absolutely tragic, absolutely abhorrent and harrowing treatment of a human being. What do you guys think of this case? What do you guys think of this kind of content? Is this something that interests you? I know it's very dark, but I think that there is a fascination. I think people have a fascination with the evil that other human beings are capable of of doing to other people. I think I think it stems to like almost disbelief, you know, like how on earth can someone do that? to someone else and it is as dark as it is as sickening as it is it is fascinating but there we go guys that is it for today's video i hope that you somehow enjoyed if you did please do like share and subscribe it does really help me out also if you want to become a patron and support me that extra mile the link is down below also i stream on twitch.tv forward slash duty rhino so if you fancy watching me on twitch watch me play a few games play call of duty play survival horror games we watch documentaries and scary videos and all that good stuff over on twitch.tv forward slash duty rhino if you want to come and join me i'd appreciate it and i'd love to see you there i stream most days thank you so much guys i really do appreciate it if you want to get express vpn us netflix protect all your data and crypt all your passwords the link for that is down below guys thank you so much i will see you very very soon be careful out there guys sometimes it can be quite a dark world sweet one geese